guys, welcome to another episode of Get Real Bass Fishing. Thank you so much for the support on the last video. We did actually hit 100 likes, but unfortunately we can't go to Montauk yet. We are going this week, so um, we will have that Montauk trip. Just babysitter situation, so Montauk video is definitely coming out this week. So you guys will see it, so thank you for hitting that 100 likes on there. If you're new to this channel, go ahead and hit that red subscribe button at any point in this video where you're like, okay, I like this channel, I want to see more. But we're going to start off with, uh, in the last video I talked about possibly using my 9 foot. So today we got the Siege 9 foot medium moderate fast rated um, 1 to 4 ounce. So it's rated the same way as my 10 foot except it's on a 9 foot scale and I have a Vansall VSX 150 as opposed to a 200 and honestly the balance on this rod is, is amazing. It feels great. Um, Eric has used it. I've used it once. I haven't hooked a fish on with it but we're definitely going to try today. See what happens. Hopefully get something. Start off with the Bunker SP like we did last time and uh, get some fish. Let's go. First cast with the swim bait, and we hook into a fish. Very nice. It feels like a blue. Come on, buddy. Come on up. Oh, that's not a bad fish. That's a big blue fish. Oh, crap. Look how fat, this, it's not a long fish, but it is a thick fish. Look at the belly on that thing. Jeez. So there we have a nice blue fish to start the day. So cool. All right. Ah, here it is. Cool. All right, so on here is the same jig head I've been fishing uh, the whole spring. It's a 3 8 ounce VMC. I think it's called a flat shad, and then a 4.8 Kitek uh, fat swing impact. I'm just gonna put it just like that, straight down the center. Just feed it, trying to keep it as center as possible. Go around to that bend. at the top and then we have another rig swim bait. See if there's more. Oh gosh. I'm gonna go through a lot of money today using the forbidden bait for bluefish. Oh man. Yeah I don't normally use uh, soft plastics because of how quickly you go through them with the bluefish but why I call them the forbidden bait. <laughs> Try to avoid it at all costs, but sometimes you just gotta, ah, another big one. Sometimes you just gotta use it. I like the nine foot a little bit better than I like the 10 foot siege. So just putting that out there while, while I'm fighting this fish. And when you see your line coming up and the fish coming up and you see their, their head, you gotta reel up, keep that pressure, keep that tension on that fish. Or chances are he'll spit that hook, so. Cool. Out here catching Mondo bluefish on the forbidden bait. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the swim bait's still in his mouth somewhere. If he opens up, you'll probably see it. But look at those yellow eyes. 
beautiful eyes. It's so good to see them again. So the best technique that I found, not just with swim baits or anything other than, you know, a soft plastic. This could work for SP minnows, mag darters, top water, whatever. If you're using, if you're fishing a big current like what I'm doing right here, we have a big drift. I found that casting up current and working your bait down ends up catching a lot more fish for you as opposed to casting all the way down because it's more of a natural bait presentation of flowing down with the current. Now, of course, like the last two fish came out from that little area. So if I know there's fish sitting in one spot over there, I'm gonna specifically target that. But if you're just trying to find fish, one, you cover a lot of area over here just by drifting a bait. And if you're not drifting a bait, you cast down there, you're getting that spot and here. So you're not really working too much water, but again, in nature, things that are dying or or weak like bait fish don't really have a like if you cast out here don't have a really good um there are, there isn't a big chance that bait fish or dying fish or weak fish are going against a fast current if something's drifting down there's a good chance it's weaker and that's when the predatory fish are going to bite um, it works in fresh water salt water all the same all right let's throw this bad boy back Get rid of the forbidden, forbidden bait. I'm gonna throw. Let's see how this rod handles a big six-inch mag guard. Really, that's what I'm doing out here. I want to see how this rod handles everything. It seems like it's casting everything very, very well as far as distance. It handled those bluefish very very well a lot better than i thought it would so let's see how it handles working a big plug like that there we go first cast with the big mag darter that's good. All right, so we got some distance out there. Okay, so we dropped the fish. Oh, we're on to another one. Oh, I need to tighten this drag. Holy cow. I forgot. I was using finesse, a finesse swim bait, so I had a thinner hook on there, so I used a lighter drag with this heavy rod. That way I didn't just rip it out and bend the hook. And then these mag darters have giant, giant hooks. Look at these. Look at the hooks I put on these. I'll link them down below, but definitely need a heavier drag for setting the hook with these ah oh, come on come on there we go and it's clicking for some reason do you guys hear that gotta keep the rod tip up try to keep them pinned as much as much as possible wow this nine foot is so fun this dude's just horsing jeez it might be two i think it's two bluefish I think I have two. I think I'm pulling in two fish. Big blue fish on the nine foot with a mag darter. That's insane. There's a big school out there. I'm gonna get back out there. Come on, air kiss. Like a bullet. So we so we started off with the forbidden bait and then switched over to a big old mag darter. And the bite just seems like it turned on from that point. Starting off on a cold morning with a swim bait. Now we're the big plugs. Awesome. Come on, here. Cool. There we go. 
Another one way out there. He hit it before I could even get my line back on the roller. Big school out there. I'm gonna try top water after this. I'm gonna throw on top water. Just for size comparison. He's past the 70-30 split. But that is probably the biggest bluefish I've caught this year. What a beast, look at that. Look at the head on him. Jeez. Let's throw some top water on. Mwah. Every time I put it, every, every time I cast this lure, by the time I hit the line roller with my line, I've already got a fish on. So I'm gonna try some top water. See if we can fool him with that. First cast with the with the popper. A giant bluefish. Peace. Mwah. So I don't know if you, I don't know how I'm gonna edit it, but I took my time with this fish. He's got giant teeth and he had one of the trebles way down in there. So I just waited, let him splash around, let him move around that, that treble, open his mouth a little and was able to get it out, no problem. It's not worth trying to open it with your fingers. If you have a boga or a grip, that's always best, but be safe with these guys. They, they will chop your finger off. They cut bunker right in half, so. All right, come on, here it is. So I came out here with the intent of seeing how the nine foot was as opposed to my 10 foot that I use. And to be honest, in close quarters like this where we're not casting super, super far or over breaks in the surf or into the inlets where we need that extra length for distance and, and power, I think the nine foot is my new favorite like back bay surf surf rod, if that's it's considered a surf rod. So. Um, yeah, this nine foot is great. Uh, I, ideally, I would still put on my 200 only because I am used to fishing my 200. I'm used to how much line it pulls up. And um, yeah, I'm just used to the 200, the big handle, bigger knob. And the 150, it did the job. I mean, you guys saw all the, all the fish I pulled up in the videos. It got the job done. But like I said, just out of what I'm used to, I would have put on the 200 if I knew about it. But Always got to learn something new, so I'm going to continue to fish it with the 150 for as long as uh, I'm not fishing with Erica because that's Erica's reel. So this is the Siege um, 9 foot medium, moderate, fast, 1 to 4 ounce. And 
I would highly recommend it. Super, super light, this setup. The 150 plus the, the nine foot, it's so balanced and so nice. It's just, even the 150, like my knuckles are bleeding and bruised. They're just beat because my hand's too big for this. But besides that, good setup. And I think we proved a good point. The nine foot would be a good rod for back here as opposed to the 10 foot. They're rated the same way, can fish the same baits. This one feels like it's a little bit softer too. So that there's more bend down down the rod as opposed to my 10 foot where I feel like my 10 foot, there's a lot of, of tip action. Now, I shouldn't say there's a lot of tip action. I feel like all the action is only in the tip as opposed to this where, where I feel it in the handle when I'm, when I'm cranking over here. I feel it here and I can, and, and when you can see the video, you see the bend more here as opposed to my 10 foot. So I like it. Going to continue to fish it, good setup, 10 foot still a good setup, just not for back here. This one's very light green, all the other ones were dark, it's very light and small actually. <laughs> Before that, I want to show you guys what I was talking about with the size of my VSX 200 compared to the 150 and show you what I was actually talking about how you know I'm used to reeling up a little bit more. So, one second. So, this is the size difference between a VSX 200 and a 150. And spool size. So, I'm used to cranking up with, well, I mean, look at the size of the handles to each other, just the knob alone. Uh, I'm used to cranking up the 200, so in the beginning there I was losing a lot of fish because I wasn't used to how much line wasn't coming up with the 150 as opposed to how much line does come up with the 200. But after a while, I figured it out, I learned it, got used to the 150 and I pulled up fish no problem. But still, <laughs> it's still a very small reel. Um, my knuckles are all red and they were bleeding before from how small that reel is just kept hitting my knuckles but magical bait you saw it all day was this and the forbidden bait the 4.8 swim bait so this yellow i think it's a six inch mag darter or maybe a seven inch mag darter it's just it's a really big mag darter <laughs> but it got completely destroyed today with the blue fish and i'll link the hooks that i i changed them out on i always change my hooks on all these plugs um, Companies like to save money and they'll put on cheaper hooks. They'll work, but I've had them bend out and rust really easily. So I replace them with these. I'll link them down below. They're must adds. Good old, good old St. Croix Siege, nine foot, medium, moderate, fast action. This is probably going to be my new favorite rod as opposed to the 10 foot. Unless I'm fishing inlets, beaches, and I have to get out far in some back bays, I'm going to stick to this nine foot and tell Erica that she needs to find a new rod. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's take the waders off. So you guys saw me put the, uh, the Z-Belt single tube on earlier this morning. And honestly, I didn't even feel like I had it on there. It wasn't cumbersome at all. It didn't feel weird on my lower back or my upper butt cheek. But put put a bunch of baits in here. I put the six inch, that giant mag darter in there, a bunch of swatters, top water, and it honestly could fit a lot more. So um, if you are running out of space in your little bag, um, get the extra tube from, from Z-Belt. I'll link his website down below. And then, um, yeah, you'll have more space. Doesn't feel crowded. Feels really, really good. So these are actually the hooks that I put on the swatters, SP minnows, mag darters at the small ones. These are the uh, one knot must add, what are they, five times strong Durasteels. I'll link them below for you, but for the big mag darter, I replaced it with the two ox. So these are them. Good to know I have it. I don't know 
if you guys do this when you put your rods on your rod racks, but I always pull out some lines so when I close that, my rod doesn't bend up a little bit. Keeps it from damaging the rod. It was a good day fishing. And certainly, I think in my opinion, gonna be a good video. So if you guys enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button. What that's gonna do, is, I say it in all the videos, is gonna make sure that YouTube pushes my next video to you and also pushes videos that you haven't seen that we have on the channel already. That way you just, it helps with the algorithm so that you see more of my content and it also helps push it out to more people. Uh, if you're new to the channel, like I said in the beginning, hit that red subscribe button if you haven't already. Uh, we got a lot of content. We're posting three videos a week of just full on fishing. Uh, I don't know who else is doing that. So it's gonna be a big way to help support us and help us keep continuing to make videos like this for you guys and for other people. So I really appreciate it. Thank you all for the support. Thank you for hitting me up in the DMs and saying how much you love the videos. It means a lot. Comment section down below as well. We hit 100 likes uh, within four hours the other day and uh, now we're going to Montauk to uh, fulfill my promise that we would go to Montauk. So if we hit 100, let's go 150 likes in the first four hours. Comment down below what you want to see from us and uh, I'll pick one of those things down in the comments and we'll go ahead and do it. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching. Stay real, smooch and release, and have some fun on the water. I'll see you next time.